Let's quickly take a look at the other assets that are in the scene. For these uh, flying rocks, after importing and baking, I use the same drag and drop technique and mix the rock and the pink metallic material together. In the properties, I change the scaling of the material and drag and drop the pink metallic on top. As I showed you earlier, I use the position generator to create a gradient. I turn the model upside down to see how it will look in the scene. At the end, I added the dirt generator on top. You can see how it shows in the cracks of the stone. When the model was ready, I sent it to Stager. In Stager, I used the Move and Scale and Rotate tool to place the rocks under the house and formed a little island out of them. The next asset is called Hydraulic Orange Peel Grab. Um, for this model, I use the same techniques I showed you earlier. After importing and baking, I drag and drop the few materials that come with Painter onto the different parts of the model. The only special thing I did that I created a dirt layer the way I showed you before. And um, there is a grunge amount slider that can create a very interesting dirt effect. I really like this one. You should try it. I copied this dirt layer across all texture sets and fine-tuned it a little bit by making this layer more transparent. When the model was ready, I sent it to Stager. I lifted the house and the rocks up and uh, placed uh, this grab model under it. The next set is the solar panel. After importing and baking, I've been following the same method I did before, drag and drop materials and add the dirt generator on top. When I was ready with the texturing, I sent the final model to Stasia. I placed the solar panel on top of the house uh, with the move tool and scale it to the right size. Now that everything is in stage art that I wanted to texture in Painter, let's build this scene. Let's make a new camera so we can set up the camera view for the final render. Press the add camera icon on the top of the viewport. I like to hide objects in the scene that I don't work with immediately, so I hit the big rocks. For the ground, I use a plane. I convert it to a basic object because we don't need it to be parametric. We can drag and drop the alien soil material on it and scale and position it the, the way we like it. I like to use the front models in the scene with higher resolution textures on, so I change it to 2K. In the properties panel under the object tab, I turn on the displacement so the plane can react to the haze map of the material. 
Under the displacement button, you can select from two tessellation modes. I select the total face budget because we need more ge geometry to be able to see the bumps. The higher this number is, the more details we get. I switch off the ground plane so it doesn't interfere with my model. The haze map is a black and white image that tells the software the, the haze of things. Most of the substance materials let you change the haze cast, so you have the option to change this on the go. After the final placement, now it's time to change the colors. In this scene, I mixed uh, two different terrain materials from Substance 3D assets. I duplicate um, the first plane and place it in the back of the scene. Drag and drop the ocean island material on it. I changed the preset and the colors of each material so they match the overall color scheme I had in mind. Sometimes it's good to play around with the presets to figure out what the materials can do. For this material, I leave the resolution of 1K because uh, the details won't be that visible in the back. When working on a scene, I like to use the render preview a lot. Uh, Stager uses the video card for the render preview and thanks to my strong NVIDIA card I previously mentioned, I can see all the details very quickly and um, it's a big help for me when I create something. After finding the best placement for the islands, let's move on to lighting. I selected this cloudy environment light from the lights panel on the left. I changed the rotation of the light so it comes from the right. In the camera properties, we can turn on the depth of field so we have the final setup for the camera. I aim the center of the depth of field to the house so we get a nice blur effect on the back of the scene. I like to change the background to sky blue so I can work on it later in Photoshop to add the cloud clouds. It's time to make the big rocks visible so we can scale and place them. The next step is adding the pink blobs, just drag and drop the models into the scene. I really like this soft plastic material, so I use that one and uh, change the color. Because of the light uh, transporting nature of this uh, translucent material, the colors changes in the subsurface scattering submenu in the material properties. Because it's, uh, it's like the inside uh, color of the model, I would say. I change the color to pink and place the models where I want them to be. In this case, I took into account the water reflections and I wanted to make sure that they reflect nicely. The reflections uh, always help with the cohesion of a scene because the elements are reacting to each other. I left the ray tracing on for the whole process so I can see all the details. In Stager, the lights work together to create a realist realistic effect, but we have to be careful as they can uh, neutralize uh, each other. So one must be stronger than the other to give some character to the lighting setup. I use a sun for this scene and point it to the side of the house to have nice shadows. I like to set the, the haze of the sun a bit uh, lower to have longer shadows. The cloudiness changes the hardness of the sunlight, so I like to play around with this because uh, really hard shadows from the sun only appear in certain situ situations in real life, like a hot summer day, for example. In this scene, I had to add more clouds in post-processing, so it's better to keep the shadows somewhat softer. I wanted to have two drones in the scene, so I duplicated one and just placed it above the water, almost like its wing is uh, touching the water.
For the propellers, after importing baking in painter, I only applied the scratch metal smart material and sent it to stager. I made a pole from a simple cylinder object, drag and dropped it from the base models. This is a parametric model, so you can customize its properties in the object tab and convert it to a standard model when you are happy with the shape. After this, I just scaled and placed the model uh, to hold the propellers. I selected the metal material for it from the starter assets called Metal Rough. Uh, this metal material has multiple presets, so to match the rest of the scene, I picked the titanium preset. I saw that the scene would be more interesting if the house would be duplicated and placed uh, into the background. From the composition point of view, it's important to equally care about the front and the back of the scene. So after working around um, the focus point of, of this whole composition, I always make sure that uh, I place interesting things everywhere.